Hey guys, so more and more I started working on things. Towards the end, I added S3 to the Terraform chapter, so I thought I will talk about that right in the very beginning. So you have a ton of pictures on your machine. You're running out of space. What do you do? You get an external hard drive, right? Now, on this external hard drive, if you got a cheaper one uh, with a spinning disk, uh, they call magnetic drives. If you don't know those terms, don't worry about it. But basically, a cheaper drive can give you more capacity, but the speed on it is not going to be as fast. Uh, and exactly the other way around. So Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage or Azure Storage, these are basically external hard drives for companies that want to store data in the ranges of 200 terabyte, 5 petabyte, and hundreds of petabytes. Like you know, it, it could be anywhere. Uh, and so as usual, Amazon has the most number of options and the most sensible options. So now the most important factor here, pricing. So similar principle as the hard drives that we use outside, but outside in a personal life, we use capacity and speed as the matrix uh, to evaluate our bang for the buck. In the cloud, we just use different matrix to evaluate that. But in the cloud, we have an additional factor and that is called, well, those are retrieval charges. So you pay money, uh, one part for storing stuff and one part for retrieving stuff. So faster speed, or like in this case, the standard one, which is the most expensive, you don't uh, pay money for retrieval, but the rest of the layers, you pay money for retrieval. And we'll talk about each one of those now. Okay, so pricing wise, S3 standard, most expensive, but no retrieval charges. Like whatever is getting stored there, you can access it once, twice, thousand times a day, and you won't be charged anything. The next cheaper layer is infrequent access. Now that costs half the price of the standard, but every time you get something out of it, you're going to pay one cent per GB. And that sounds like a small number, but guys, like now these companies, can access terabytes and petabytes of data. So that can add up real quick. All right, so the problem with this was people didn't really know. Uh, they're like, the exact access patterns are not known, okay? Like pictures, right? Everybody's wedding pictures are in a one big giant album. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Smith are very popular and people access their photos a ton more times. Uh, then like Mr. and Mrs. Azad, uh, nobody cares about their pictures. But the storage doesn't know that, right? Like as a person, you know that, and sometimes you figure it out later in the game. So people were putting stuff that's not frequently accessed in standard, paying more on the storage cost, and they were putting stuff that is frequently accessed and infrequent access and paying more on retrieval costs. Okay, so these guys came up with a solution and that was that's called intelligent tiering. Now intelligent tiering watches the usage of a file for 30 days. Okay, if the file is not getting accessed, it will move it to the infrequent access. Okay, and then if a file in infrequent access is getting access, it's going to get moved to the standard tier. Now there has to be a catch, and the catch is they, they charge you 0 0.0025 per 1,000 objects, okay? But I, I, I was being funny, like it's a very negligible amount, um, but because of these automatic um, back and forth, people save a lot of money, and basically people save a lot of money because Amazon does not charge anything for retrieving from the intelligent tiering. Intelligent tiering contains both standard and infrequent, and you get charged for the storage as you would uh, the storage outside as standard and infrequent, but there are no retrieval charges 
or the infrequent access, if that makes sense. All right, so these are basically regular types of storage. The next thing that these guys are saying here, S3 one zone infrequent access, this one just has less amount of redundancy and that's about it. So it costs a little bit less money, but not a whole lot, all right? So S3 Glacier is S3 Glacier and S3 Glacier Deep Archive. This is the data government firms, healthcare firms, and like people who need to retain data for years and years and years, but it rarely gets accessed. Though uh, this solution is for those guys. And as you can see, the prices are very cheap. The retrieval prices, are also pretty reasonable. I mean, it's basically same as the standard infrequent access, as well as, uh, well, the retrieval charges for both are pretty good. Like the bulk retrieval where you give Amazon a longer time. So if you're trying to retrieve 200 terabytes, if you want it right now, like in the next 15 minutes, you're gonna pay three cents per gigabyte. Okay, that's the expedited retrieval. If you're gonna say uh, the standard retrieval takes like two hours to five hours to six hours, for that you're gonna uh, get one cent, we're gonna pay one cent per GB. Now the bulk retrieval, you basically tell Amazon, hey, I want this data, but like I'm in no hurry, give it to me sometime this week. That is bulk retrieval, and I think it's 24 hours, not this week and that costs the least amount of money. So very cheap, very inefficient. Uh, Deep Archive, the amount of time it takes to retrieve the bulk retrieval is a lot longer, but then it also costs, a whole, but it costs a whole lot less money, one fourth of the S3 Glacier. Okay, and now same thing applies to other cloud providers, uh, it just, their services are a little comical, but you're going to have to know them. And where is that open? Okay, so this is S3. Now Google Cloud Storage has three available storage classes and they make it very easy to figure out what they are. So their standard is the same standard uh, in S3, but near line is their infrequent access while core line is their glacier. I know it doesn't make any sense, but it is what it is. So they just have three classes, so that's a good thing. So you don't have to remember a whole lot of nonsensical terms. And the pricing on these guys uh, is, okay, these are the, I had opened this properly. My apologies, guys. Okay, so their storage price is 0 0.026. Uh, I think they matched it with S3 recently, because. They were more the last time I checked it. Oh no, S3 is still cheaper at 23, uh, 0 to 23 cents. Okay, and now near line storage, uh, which is basically infrequent access and core line storage is 0 0.007. That doesn't really save you a whole lot, 30%, that's a joke. Okay, and then retrieval charges, you get charged. Where are the retrieval charges? Okay, so these are the retrieval charges. Uh, like there are free operations, but there are some kind of operations which they are listed here and you can go through them, pretty pointless. But overall, uh, Google storage is a lot more expensive than the AWS storage. And so standard storage, their fees are lower, uh, near line and core line storage, the fees are higher. Uh, Azure has similar uh, concepts, I mean like similar type of storage, Azure storage, but they make it even worse to understand things. And somehow this is going to be Azure storage. Okay, so now uh, the names that these guys use are even more awesome compared to Google. Uh, one is file, one is disk, one is blob. Sorry guys, I actually made this video at a higher resolution, but you can barely tell what's where. Uh, so these are the different types of storage Azure provides. Don't really have to go too deep into it, but 
depending on your need, you're going to decide like, you know, how much needs to be the rate of retrieval and how much you want to pay to store it. You will pick up one of those. Anyways, you need to use class while creating a bucket. When you create it properly, uh, you can just use the standard, but that's the most expensive tier and we don't necessarily want to do that. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to cover in this chapter. Uh, now, this is completely, like this is even slower. Uh, in EC2, we saw two types of disks. One is internal disk, very fast. Then the next type of disk is external disk. Those are slower. And this is the most slow, but this is the most highly available. Okay? And that's all, guys. See you in the next lesson.